Should I say and you're watching that type of thing? Okay. Good. Yo, what's up? I am Fred from the color Fred. You're watching BurningStars.net. Uh, your debut debut album, Find the Break, was released in October. How do you feel it was received? Um, I was really happy about uh, the response to the album. Uh, it's been like more us proving it on the road though because uh, I think people are wondering how we're going to pull it off live. I, I played all the instruments on the record except the drums and sang everything. It was very much a solo record but they wanted to see, you know, some people expect an acoustic thing live but it's very much a loud band, loud rock band. I think it's been going awesome. I'm having a blast. and. Uh, and people have seemed to be enjoying themselves so watching it. So. Um, your album leaked on the internet before it came out. Yeah. Um, how do you feel about people leaking and downloading albums? Well, um, I, I, try, I definitely would never judge anyone for downloading albums. I, I personally don't download music for free, but I have shared a good bit of music with my friends and that and that whole sharing um, even just off grabbing something off someone's computer is uh, you know it, it is ultimately hurting people but the way I look at it is if you have a favorite artist or some artists that you really like it's it's um, kind of like giving your vote by buying their records so I think it's just important that you still try to buy the artists that you really love. And if you say, oh, I haven't bought a CD in five years, <laughs> you know, and then you're, you're removing yourself from supporting, like, you, like me, like I would want my favorite bands to, to grow and, and it is hurting them by the fact that their record isn't selling anymore. So I would just, urge people to support the fans they love by buying stuff. Do you think it affected your album sales at all? Uh, it definitely did as far as, um, it's affected every record that comes out today, honestly. Um, uh, but that said, I'm happy with what it's done. Um, what do you think about Radiohead's technique for In Rainbows by letting people name their own price on the album? Well, that was ingenious, obviously. And unfortunately, I feel like the novelty of it helped them a lot and helped them to get a lot of money for it. There are other bands I've heard, oh, they're doing the radio, Radiohead thing. And, and it's sort of like, oh, well, that's been done. And I'm not, you know, I'm not going to check that out. I mean, I think it's a great idea, though. I, I guess if you're a fan of a band, you're going you're gonna to do what you can. So... That was pure genius, though, what they did, and, and uh, I don't know if anyone could do it as successfully, but it, it's, it should be done more. More people should at least try it. Um, the first single was If I Surrender. How did you decide on that to represent the album? Um, that was a tough one because there are a couple songs that we felt, that I felt were potential singles, and... Uh, but uh, that one I had around for a long time. Um, I had some demos of it up a few years ago, like about a year and a half ago. Um, like the early demos sounded a lot different, but um, I wanted like the people who knew of the color Fred since back then to sort of feel like, oh, I remember this way back when. And, and, um, and it just seemed like a solid song all around. And I also got a video idea the whole concept of what we did for the video, which was like a Groundhog Day thing. I had that idea for that song, for that song specifically, so uh, we, we just went with it. Um, what can you, tell, can you tell us more about the concept of the video? The video, we shot it at my house, and I just had my friends uh, shoot it. They, they make videos, um, but it was important to me that everything about this project involved like had my fingers in it. I don't have a, a manager pushing buttons or calling people and doing favors. You know, I'm just, I'm just uh, 
I'm just doing it all very hands-on myself, and uh, and so, which is why, like, I went to Lou Giordano to to uh, record it. It was important to me that he was someone I've worked with before. But anyway, the video itself, um, it's it's me getting up as if I'm going to work at a job, and bad things keep happening, and I have to, and I have to, uh, and but. Each time the bad thing happens, it basically takes me out, kills me, or knocks or knocks me unconscious. I wake up in bed again, same day, same things happen. I have to try to avoid it the way Bill Murray did in Groundhog Day. So we did, we uh, we went for that, but we also were thinking of um, uh, movies like The Royal Tenenbaums, like more modern, like brighter colors, and uh, it's it's. Some people think it's really funny, but it, it wasn't like slapstick. It's very like, just I just wanted something that was interesting to watch and something you could watch a lot of times and catch something different each time. Um, how many songs did you actually write for the album and how did you decide on the ones that you picked? I had over 40 songs demoed, <laughs> um, mostly just demoed on my computer at home. Um, and there was a good 25 that were hard to whittle down, um, but ultimately I was trying to find a good balance between ones that sounded like uh, the bands I was in previously, like Take It Back Sunday and even Breaking Pangea, um, along with something new that none of those bands were able to do before, like uh, there's a piano ballad on the song on the uh, album, and I've never done a piano song in my life, so. Um, you're currently on tour with Chiodos and the first to last How is it going so far? It's awesome. Uh, we've been on this tour uh, all month, but uh, from first to last has only been on it recently with us. Um, it was definitely a heavier crowd and we were really unsure how they would take to the melodic uh, nature of our band. And it's been like crazy. It's, I mean, they, the, uh, just in general, like, you know, I try to like get down in the crowd and talk to the people and, and tell stories while, I'm, while, you know, all the songs on this album are about something. Some guys sing about vague things, and some guys sing about pretend, made up stories. This is all true stories, all very um, de detailed. Um, the way I describe them, uh, they're not real. Um, like you can tell what a song's about when you check out our music. So I'll tell the story of the song. Hey, I woke, wrote this on Warp Tour two years ago about this and that kind of thing. Are there any highlights of the tour you would like to share? Um, I'm looking at Grady Chiotis' sound guy, and uh, he is hilarious, by the way. Um, he he will always be a highlight for me. But just hanging out with Chiodos, um, you know, a lot of bands you go on tour with opening and they, they're not as considerate as these guys are. They're really friendly and welcoming. And come in, eat our food, sit in our dressing room, hang out. and um, It's just been a good tour all around. And um, we're on it for the next week and it ends up at Bamboozle, and, um, which we're excited for. And uh, it's just been a great time. We're going to England uh, next week for a few weeks. And of course in the summer getting ready for a work tour, which will be awesome and hot and sweaty. <laughs> oh sorry. I knew I was getting ahead. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're we're just yeah, we're gearing up for uh, for Warped and uh, just um, just trying to spread the word. Like I still feel like people are just finding out about the project. Um, every night, kids come up. Oh, I loved it. I didn't even know about you guys until yesterday. And and uh, even we were at the mall <laughs> and um, our guitar tech went over to a girl with a Taking Back Sunday shirt. I said, hey, uh, do you like Taking Back Sunday? She said, yeah, it's my favorite band. And I uh, said, are you going to the Color Fred show tonight? I said, who's that? And it's 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 kind of the way it's been. Um, so, but that's all right. Like, the only way that I've ever known how to do this is to go out on the road and spread it 
by actually playing and proving it and spreading it by word of mouth. And that's what we're going to keep doing until people find out. And so we're planning the fall right now and just going to keep going. <laughs> You're playing the entire Warp Tour? We're doing the whole Warp Tour and uh, we're already talking about some things for the fall. Um, so we're not planning on coming home for a while. I still have more songs I'm working on for the next album, but I'm not going to be demoing it until until probably next year. We've been in several bands over the last seven years. What's been the most memorable experience? Um, there have been so many great times. Like Breaking Pangea was sort of my band that I fronted for years, and uh, those to me are like the good old days. But I had really good times at Taking Back Sunday. We, you know, going to Japan and, and uh, playing the huge festivals in England were amazing. And even just all the people that I've met in the States that I've maintained friendships with, that I'm still touring with till, till now. It's, I've been really lucky and I, and I totally realize that. And uh, I just, I'm, you know, I work as hard as I can to keep making music that I hope people will care about because I know that I've been lucky and I, and I just, I hope everyone keeps listening. What would your dream tour be? Who would you tour? Um, oh man, uh, I mean, I, I'm fans of a lot of bands just in our scene, like, Price and Say Anything are some of my favorite bands, and, uh, and uh, I mean, I like a lot of classic rock that's now be fun, it's like, like um, of course, Led Zeppelin, and, and people that aren't alive anymore, <laughs> um, Jeff Buckley, and, and uh, uh, so, it would be really hard for me, because I like any music, and every band we've seen the tour with is always funner than the last, so um, I can't give you a perfect uh, tour, but I don't know. Chiodos right now, honestly. I'm in the moment. <laughs> is there anything else you'd like to add that maybe we didn't cover in the interview or anything you want to say to you fans watching? Um, well, the, the only other part of my project is um, we are getting more and more involved in um, the environmental issues. Um, our CD packaging is um, keeps that in mind and again it's because everything everything about this project I want to reflect my personality and the things that I'm passionate about. So like our packaging is 100% uh, biodegradable and mainly made uh, 90% recycled material. Um, so the thing will basically melt in water. <laughs> There's this new kind of plastic uh, made from cornstarch that we used on the inside. And uh, I would just urge people to um, look up online places like uh, stopglobalwarming.org and just try to learn climatecrisis.net and um, just learn more about that because it really is about the future generations of our planet and is going to eventually bite us. <laughs> Do you have anything you want to say to your fans besides that? Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> oh, no. I, uh, I just, um, I would say if you haven't heard The Color Fred, to check it out, but more than that, come out to a live show because that's where the most fun is. Um, I'm always hanging out back at the shirts or anywhere club and I'm easy to find so come out hang out we'll talk and uh, and hopefully you'll you'll have a lot of fun dancing to the music <laughs> thank you all right thank you very much I paused it